With wishes for a very happy Dhanteras, I, Ashwarya, welcome you all to this edition of Midday News. Let us start the bulletin with the headlines. Mizoram Assembly Speaker resigns from his post, the House and the Congress to join the BJP today ahead of the state polls on 28th of November. Campaigning picks space for first phase of Chhattisgarh polls, last date for withdrawal of candidature for the second phase of state polls today. Vice President M. Naidu to hold talks with President of Malawi today. Several agreements to be signed between the two sides. Vice President to also address India Malawi business meet, third and final leg of Vice President's Africa visit. Massive landslide blocks the Jammu Srinagar National Highway in Ramban district. Authorities trying to restore all-weather road linking Kashmir with the rest of the country. Snowfall in Himachal and Uttarakhand. Delhi pollution levels spike ahead of Diwali. Prohibitory orders in place in Shabrimala and nearby areas as Hill Shrine of Ayappa in Kerala opens for special puja today. 2300 personnel deployed. Shrine opens for second time since Supreme Court decision allowing entry of women of all age groups. And US sanctions against Iran's oil exports come into force. Washington says measures will have intended effect to alter Iranian regime's behavior. India among eight countries likely to get waiver from sanctions on Iran's banking and energy sectors. Let us first get you all the election-related news. The Speaker of the Mizoram Assembly has resigned from his post, the House and the Congress. Mizoram Speaker Haifi submitted his resignation letter to Deputy Speaker, who accepted it. He said that he also resigned from the ruling Congress party and would join the Bhartiya Janta party. Now, Haifei, a veteran leader, was elected to the 40-member assembly from uh, the Palak constituency in 2013. Mizoram, the only state in the northeast under Congress rule, uh, will go to the polls on 28th of November. And today is the last day for the withdrawal of nominations for the second phase of elections in Chhattisgarh. 72 constituencies of the state will go to polls on 20th of November in the second phase. Remember, Chhattisgarh has 90 constituencies and here the assembly elections are scheduled to be held in two phases on 12th and 20th of November. Meanwhile, in Madhya Pradesh, the election commission has said that maps of the polling booth will be printed on the back side of the voter slip in the assembly elections. Remember, single phase of voting will be held for the 230-seat state assembly on 28th of November. Meanwhile, campaigning has a big pace for the first phase of the assembly elections in Chhattisgarh and star campaigners of different parties are touring Bastar and Rajnandgaon areas to garner support for their candidates. BJP President Amit Shah addressed election rallies in Khuji, Kherga, Khairgar and uh, Kondagaon constituencies of Chhattisgarh. He asked the Congress party to clarify its stand on the issue of Naxalism. The BJP president said that uh, Congress seeks a re revolution in uh, Naxalism while the Bharatiya Janata Party considers development as revolution. You know, the गांव गांव में बिजली पहुंचाने का काम किया आदिवासी बच्चों के लिए छात्रालय बनाने का काम किया मित्रों ये कांग्रेस पार्टी विकास नहीं कर सकती कांग्रेस पार्टी ने देश में कहीं पर भी विकास नहीं किया है नक्सलवाद से मुक्त छत्तीसगढ़ चाहिए तो कांग्रेस पार्टी नहीं दे सकती केवल और केवल भारतीय जनता पार्टी और हमारे नेता डॉक्टर रमन सिंह भी नक्सलवाद के मुख्य सचिव को 
Meanwhile, uh, the Bahujan Samaj Party chief, uh, while addressing a public meeting in Janjgir Champa district, alleged that anti scheduled caste and anti tribal governments of the state were responsible to compel the people on the path of Naxalism and violence. Mayavati said uh, only if uh, the coalition government comes into power will there be progress for all sections of society. हमारी सरकार बन जाती है गठबंधन की सरकार बन जाती है तभी फिर यहाँ सर्व समाज में से खासकर दलितों आदिवासियों पिछड़े वर्गों मुस्लिम व अन्य धार्मिक अल्पसंख्यकों के साथ साथ गरीबों मजदूरों किसानों व्यापारियों एवं अन्य मेहनत कश लोगों का सही विकास व उत्थान हो सकता है and the Congress party on Sunday released its uh, second list of 16 candidates uh, for Madhya Pradesh. The list uh, includes uh, five sitting MLAs and several new faces. The party since uh, Saturday has declared the names of 171 candidates for Madhya Pradesh Assembly elections. Senior Congress legislator Ram Nivas Rawat has been re-nominated from the Vijaypur seat in Shiopur district where he will be pitted against BJP's uh, Sita Ram Adivasi. The party has nominated a new face, uh, Siddharth Lada, against uh, Yashodhara Raja Sindhya, MP minister and a member of the erstwhile Gwalior royal family from Shivpuri. The Congress had announced its list of 155 candidates on Saturday, in which it had re-nominated 46 sitting MLAs. And in Telangana, the election authorities have asked the Telangana government to initiate necessary action over allegations that public relations officers working with the caretaker ministers were involved in canvassing for the TRS party on social media. In his 31st of October letter to the State General Administration Principal Secretary, the additional chief electoral officer drew his attention to the complaint made by some journalists at a recent press meet that PROs were allegedly posting party programs in social media groups, particularly on WhatsApp. The letter requested the government to accord top priority to the matter and take necessary action, keeping in view the model code of conduct and also furnish a compliance report. Assembly elections in Telangana are scheduled to be held on 7th of December. Let's get to some other news now. At least uh, five Maoists, including a woman, were gunned down in exchange of uh, fire with the security personnel in a forest in Malkangiri district today. The gun battle took place uh, near uh, Paplur area when special operation group personnel were conducted a combing operation. Five Maoists were killed in the encounter and the casualty could be more as the search operation in the area was still in progress. No security personnel was injured in the operation. The security personnel recovered two rifles, one SLR, one 303 rifle and a hand grenade from the spot. Efforts are on to track other rebels who ran away from the area during the gun battle. Now, two teams of SOGs have been conducted a combing operation since Sunday and they spotted a group of Maoists in the jungle. News from Jammu and Kashmir now, where Governor Satyapal Malik has said that the accused involved in killing senior BJP leader and his brother in Kishthwar have been identified. He added that they will be brought to book soon. Bharti Janta Party State Secretary Anil Parihar and his brother Ajit Parihar were killed on 1st of November by suspected militants when they were walking towards their home. Now, the governor has said that it has been proved that it was an incident of militancy, adding that it was an act of frustration on the part of militants and Pakistan. The Jammu and Kashmir government has constituted a special investigation team to probe the killing and directed it uh, to expedite the investigation and submit its report as early as possible. Meanwhile, curfew continues for the fifth consecutive day in Jammu and Kashmir's Kishtwar town today, which was imposed following the killings. और इसके साथ तीन चार कस्बे ऐसे हैं हम रात भर डरे रहे कि कहीं कोई चीज ना हो जाए। बहुत अच्छी बात ये हुई कि दोनों संप्रदायों ने बोल के इसको कंडेम किया और मिलजुल के शांति बहाल की है। मैं आप सबों से भी ये कहूँगा। 
कि मेहरबानी करके इस शांति को बनी रहने दें और वो लोग पहचान लिए गए हैं लगभग जिन्होंने किया था और बहुत जल्दी आपके सामने नतीजे आएंगे ये बिल्कुल सौ फीसदी साबित हो गया कि ये मिलिटेंसी की घटना थी और ये जो कोशिश हो रही है ये पहले भी हुई है हम इसको कामयाब नहीं होने देंगे Big story from Kerala where the Lord Ayappa Temple at Shabrimala opens today for a special puja and a thick security cover has been put in place after violent protests that were witnessed last month against the entry of women of all ages into the shrine around 2300 personnel including a 20 member commando team and 100 women have been employed to ensure smooth darshan and prohibitory orders under section 144 of the CRPC banning the assembly of four or more people is in force at Pamba and nearby areas the devotees who arrived in the area since sunday evening protested this morning for not being allowed to leave for pamba and this is the second time that the hill temple would be open for darshan after the supreme court allowed the entry of women of all age groups into it a high level meeting of senior police officers was held to take stock of the situation earlier And in midday news, we'll take a very short break here. We'll be right back with more news. Welcome back after the break, and now an update on Vice President M. Venkaiah Naidu's Africa visit. The Vice President reached Malawi on the final leg of his three-nation Africa tour after visiting Botswana and Zimbabwe. The Vice President will hold talks with the President of Malawi later today. and following delegation level talks both the nations are expected to sign several agreements vice president naidu is also scheduled to attend india malawi business meet and visit the state house of malawi and later in the evening vice president naidu will attend the opening of the jaipur foot camp for the fitment of artificial limbs under india for humanity theme And earlier praising the Indian community in Malawi for making significant contribution in economic activities Vice President M Venkaiah Naidu said that India is on the move and global organizations like the World Bank and the IMF have also appreciated the country's economic progress citing the success of the introduction of a GST regime Venkaiah Naidu said in October the GST collection crossed a record 1 lakh crore rupees He said that India is on a course to become a 5 trillion economy by 2025. Naidu also quoted the World Bank's Doing Business 2019 report which said that India which advanced to the 77th place in the global ranking is now the region's top ranked economy. My dear sisters and brothers India is one of the fastest growing major economies in the world with a current growth rate of this quarter is 8.2 percent is on the course to become a 5 trillion economy by 2025 the indian story as it is unfolding today is very promising one india is moving fast forward to transform itself into a modern 21st century inclusive economy towards this end our government have taken number of measures i am happy to note that uh, despite being less than 1% of the total population of malawi we have made significant contribution to find a place of leadership in the economic activities of this country some of you have attained positions of excellence in your respective professions i am extremely happy to note that you are providing leadership in various sectors And Prime Minister Narendra Modi has said that the measures announced by him for micro small and medium enterprises will add strength to the sector. He also said that uh, bigger markets and better opportunities for the micro small and medium enterprises was a win-win situation. Remember the Prime Minister had on Friday announced a slew of measures including sanctioning of loans of up to 1 crore rupees to small and medium enterprises in 59 minutes through a special portal. The Prime Minister's response was to a user's appreciation for the steps taken by the government. Public sector companies, which were mandated to source 20% of their annual procurement from MSMEs, will now have to source at least a quarter of their requirement from the sector. Also, 3% of sourcing by public sector undertakings should be done from MSMEs run by women. 
Also, all the central public sector enterprises will have to take membership of the government e-marketplace to facilitate uh, online procurement of common use goods and services by various government departments and organizations. And as the Diwali celebrations begin across the country, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has appealed to the people to make purchases, keeping the poor in mind. In a video shared by Health Minister J.P. Nadda, the Prime Minister extended the Diwali greetings to all and said that while making purchases of clothes, diyas and any such item during the festival, citizens must bear in mind the benefits that unknown people behind the manufacturing of these products would get. मेरे प्यारे देशवासियों क्या हम खरीदारी करते समय सोच सकते हैं कि मैं जो चीज खरीद रहा हूं उससे मेरे देश के किस नागरिक का लाभ होगा किसके चेहरे पर खुशी आएगी और गरीब से गरीब को लाभ होगा तो मेरी खुशी अधिक से अधिक होगी इस पवित्र पर्वों के लिए मैं आप सबको हृदय पूर्वक बहुत बहुत शुभकामनाएं देता हूँ Around to some other news now, about 75 lakh new tax filers have been added to the income tax payers list in the country this fiscal till now. As per the director of the Central Board of Direct Taxes, the target uh, for the taxmen is to add uh, 1.25 crore fresh tax filers by the end of the 2018-19 financial year that ends in March next year. The department last fiscal had added 1.06 crore new tax filers to the income tax net during the 2017-18 financial year. Now, a new income tax filer is defined as a person who is not included in the tax filing base at the beginning of the year, but who files the return during the year. News from Jammu and Kashmir, a massive landslide blocked the jammu Srinagar National Highway in Ramban district today with the authorities mobilizing men and machinery to restore the all-weather road linking Kashmir with the rest of the country. The highway was cleared for one-way traffic on Sunday, a day after being closed due to heavy snowfall along the Jawahar Tunnel and Kazi Gonda stretch and a landslide at multiple places between Ramban and Banihal sector. Senior Superintendent of Police Sir Ramban said uh, that uh, the landslide uh, struck uh, the highway near uh, Battery Cheshma along the Banihal Ramban stretch, blocking the 270 km arterial road. Over 700 stranded passengers coming from Srinagar to Jammu were rescued in a night long operation from the avalanche prone area of Jawahar Tunnel. Meanwhile, neighbouring Himachal Pradesh also witnessed a heavy snowfall in higher reaches and rains across the state. Uh, this uh, has uh, dipped the mercury by several lotches in Himachal Pradesh. Shimla and Manali witnessed rains, uh, while other hill stations like Kalpa and Chitkul in Kinnor district and Kelong in Lahore Spiti received the season's first snowfall. Manali, which uh, saw a low of 2.2 degrees Celsius, experienced uh, 40 millimetres of rain. The state capital, however, saw mild rains and recorded a minimum temperature of 7.3 degrees Celsius. Meanwhile, in the national capital, due to high impact of a stubble burning, Delhi's pollution levels were pushed to the very poor category on Monday as a thick haze engulfed the national capital ahead of Diwali. On Monday, the PM 2.5 level was recorded at 268, while the PM 10 was recorded at 391. The spike in the pollution level comes a day after the air quality had improved uh, to moderate category due to meteorological factors and the control measures implemented by the authorities in Delhi. The authorities have stepped up efforts to combat pollution, which includes measures like uh, halting construction activities and also regulating traffic. The Delhi Pollution Control Committee has also directed the Transport Department and the Traffic Police to intensify checking of polluting vehicles and control uh, travel congestion in the region during uh, 1st to 10th of November. All the international news now. First up, news on the ongoing uh, political crisis in Sri Lanka. And in further dramatic turn of events, President uh, Maithripala Sirisena has ordered Parliament to reconvene in 10 days a week later than expected, 
prolonging a bitter power struggle that has crippled the country. The parliament would now reconvene on 14th of November. The announcement drew sharp criticism from the party of the country's ASAC Prime Minister Ranil Vikram Singhe, which described it as too late and said that the move would only lead to bargaining and defections. The announcement on Sunday came amid mounting pressure to let the legislators hold a vote in order to resolve the protracted political crisis over two rival prime ministers. Remember, Sirisena had suspended parliamentary proceedings until 16th of November after abruptly firing Prime Minister Vikram Singhe last week and replacing him with Mahinda Rajapaksa, a controversial former president. The United Nations and many Western countries had urged Sirisena to summon the House immediately after Vikram Singhe called his 26th of October sacking as unconstitutional and refused to step down. Meanwhile, in an interview, Sri Lanka's uh, deposed Prime Minister Vikram Singhe said that the United States and Japan had frozen more than a billion dollars of development aid after his abrupt dismissal raised doubts about the future of democracy in the island nation. A lot of projects are held up. For you to get money from the USA, that's held up on the Millennium Project. Uh, Which one? Millennium Challenge Project. That's, uh, this is yes. million dollars. nearly $500 million there. Then I think the Japanese soft loan has been held up. The light, tra light railway. Yeah, so that's, that's held up. And the Trump administration has said that it is confident that the toughest ever sanctions against Iran, which came into effect from today, will have the intended effect to alter the Iranian regime's behavior. However, the United States uh, dodged a question on whether it has firm commitments from India and China to stop oil purchases uh, from Tehran within six months. The sanctions cover Iran's banking and energy sectors and reinstate penalties for countries and companies in Europe, Asia and elsewhere that do not hold Iranian oil imports. Now, India and China, the two biggest buyers of Iranian crude, have to have so far appeared to have skipped the punitive American sanctions targeting the Iranian oil and financial sectors. The two Asian giants are believed to be among the eight countries that have been given the rare exemptions from the Iranian sanctions that kicked off today. Meanwhile, Iran's President Hassan Rouhani responded that the Islamic Republic will proudly bypass the U.S. sanctions, stating that it is against international regulations. Iran sanctions are very strong. They're the strongest sanctions we've ever imposed. And we'll see what happens with Iran, but they're not doing very well, I can tell you. Iran is not doing very well. It's a big difference since I've been in office. When I came to office, if you go a day before, it looked like Iran was going to take over the Middle East. It was a question of literally less than years, very quickly. And now nobody's talking about that. Sports news now. India defeated the West Indies by five wickets in the first T20 match at the Eden Gardens in Kolkata yesterday, chasing a target of 110 runs. The men in blue clinched the victory in just 17.5 overs with seven wickets in hand. Dinesh Karthik played an unbeaten knock of 31 runs, while Krunal Pandya's quick innings of 21 runs helped India seal the victory. For West Indies, uh, O'Shane Thomas and skipper Carlos Braithwaite uh, took uh, two wickets uh, each. An earlier batting first, West Indies uh, scored 109 runs in their allotted 20 overs. Fabian Allen scored uh, 27 runs for West Indies. For India, Kuldeep Yadav was the pick of the bowlers as he took three wickets. An Indian shuttler Shubhankar, they clinched the 2018 Sar Lord Lux Open Badminton Tournament in Germany. Shubhankar defeated a fifth-seeded Rajiv Osif of Britain 21-11-21-14 in the men's singles to lift the title. And earlier in the semi-finals, he had defeated China's Peng Bo Ren 21-18-11-21-24-22. And with that, we wrap up this edition of Midday News. Thanks for watching.